You're now listening to Hack and Grow Rich with Shaheen Shayan and his co-host, Bart Baggett, where we discuss hacking your way to success and the unconventional paths to unreasonable success with the people who've been there. And now, the author of Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, Shaheen Shayan. Fam, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the CEO Pulse Podcast, where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. Today, we are sitting down with Shaheen Shan. He, uh, he, check this out. He developed a um, a nootropic pill in in the uh, when he was a teenager and generated a billion over a bill. That's a B, right? Over a billion in revenue. Uh, at a young age. I, after that, he's jumped into uh, different um, different areas, uh, such as Amazon businesses. He's wrote, uh, written a book, uh, and his uh, his entrepreneurial experience. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's insane. It's uh, you don't normally see that path, right? When you jump into into uh, into entrepreneurship, you usually uh, you know see the bootstrap you know type of story that happens, and and you know we get challenges and 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 things like that. But he, I mean, he really exploded. Uh, uh, you know, in the nineties with, with this thing. And it's just insane. It's like so far, you know, ahead of its time. So I'm pretty excited to have you on and uh, really tap into your overall story. I mean, we can use that as a, as a platform for the conversation, but I think there's so much uh, substance to everything that you do. So I'm very, very glad to have you on the show, man. Thanks for having me on, man. Excited to be on and to have a conversation with an organizational psychologist, which I didn't (laughs) even know was a thing, but I, now I realize I need one. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we, we can make things up, but you know, all day, all day long now with online media and everything. So, um, no, it's, it's actually one of the 11 recognized, uh, uh branches of psychology and, wow. uh, and yeah, just like Wendy, I'm the Mexican Wendy Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, so you're doing a couple of different things now, right? I mean, you, you wrote a book, um, you teach people how to build businesses on Amazon. Uh, and, uh, you also have a, a, um, an agency where you, uh, where you help people get on podcasts and, and, you know, push their brands to a whole nother level. Um, before we jump into all that stuff, give me a little bit of context on your personal background. How did you get started as an entrepreneur and how did you, uh, I mean, come, how was the think so big from such an early age? <laughs> yeah, it's a really good question. So we were immigrants. I uh, came to the United States from Iran during the revolution. And we landed and very quickly realized how in Iran, we were middle class, uh, solid middle class. In the United States, we were poor. Mm-hmm. And my dad had to work odd jobs, pizza places, Worked at a dry cleaners where I ended up working for most of 40 years almost and just trying to make ends meet. And I realized at a young age, looking around me, man, there's wealth everywhere. There's the guy driving down Pacific Coast Highway, top down in his Ferrari with a beautiful blonde sitting next to him. I want to be that guy. I want those things. I want the big house. I want the, the fancy cars. I wanted all that wealth and success but there was no path to it for me. Mm. So woke up one morning and I just realized, man, I need a change. And so I left home. I left home at 15 and I left behind everything, which wasn't much, just my family and a few, few things that I owned and left to find my fame and fortune. And when I did, I got involved in the electronic music scene. I managed to get myself a mentor at that time. And in the electronic music scene, I realized that there was a lot of money being moved around. It was in the 90s. It was the rave scene, the electronic music culture. And the thing that I realized was that the people who were making the money weren't the people who were making the music. The Mm -hmm. people who were making the money were the people who were selling the drugs, one in particular called ecstasy or MDMA. And I decided very quickly that, hey, That'll be a great thing for me to do. Let me do that. <laughs> the problem was that it was illegal. Yeah. And I had learned early on in my adolescence that I was very good at making money, very bad at crime, terrible at crime. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself at a very young age, you know, what we did was we started a, uh, little criminal enterprise in school where we would go to the liquor store. We would steal little things, glue, cigarettes, liquor, those little bottles of liquor, and we would sell them in school. 
and I would make a lot of money, but I would constantly get caught. So I realized that, man, if crime ever comes up, I should just not do it because I'm fucking bad at crime. <laughs> and so now fast forward, I'm in the rave scene. I don't have any money. I don't have anywhere to live. I was basically sleeping wherever I could lay my head. And here's this opportunity, but it carries with it this great risk. So I thought, how do I de-risk that? And I said, hey, man, what if I come up with an all-natural legal alternative to ecstasy? How would that work? And I did it. And we went from 50 people to 1,000 people to 10,000 people to pretty soon having it sold all over the world. And the supply of ecstasy went down. And so there was no product out there for people to have. And our product was there to answer the demand in the marketplace. And we just went out. And in a very short course of time, I created over a billion dollars in revenue from a startup pre-internet, pre-social media, pre-cell phones. It was an, an incredible ride. And it's well-documented for anybody who's interested. My book, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, it's out now on Amazon, Audible, wherever books are found. Billion. Uh, we'll be sure to put a link to that. It's definitely outside of the box thinking, especially. I mean, now it's it's uh, you know it's relatively easier, right, to picture something like that, something to cut a pulse. Why? Because we have social media that we can leverage. We can spread the word. It's it's kind of like uh, it's easier when it comes to that realm. But I mean, doing it in the '90s. I mean, that's that's a whole nother level, man. How how did you guys go about it? Was it guerrilla marketing? Was it word of word of mouth or, you know, and, and I mean, that's one of the questions, right? The other one is how what inspired you to <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I know that you saw a void, right? And like, what if we could come up with something that was, uh, you know, legal, uh, a legal alternative? But how how did you put that together? Because you kind of went from from one point to the next real quick. Uh, and, and, uh, and I don't know, I feel like there, there's, there's stuff that we can, we can, uh, definitely pluck from there. Yeah. Uh, so, so lessons two, and two, <laughs> yeah. So you had two great questions. Question number one is how did I do it? Do I do it through social media? There is no social media. Right. Um, what motivated me was hunger, literal hunger. I was hungry. I wanted to succeed. I wanted to make money. I wanted to, and, and I actually remember the first days of sales, I wouldn't eat. Not that I had very much money to eat. I would hang out at the community college and when they gave away free food or whatever, that's where I would eat normally. But I wouldn't allow myself to eat until I made a sale. Why? Because it reaffirmed that making a sale person to person fed me. It reaffirmed that physically so that I knew that making a sale had a positive connotation. And I teach this now yeah. to people and entrepreneurs how to make money. How I did it was maybe a little bit more interesting. So I created something and I looked at the distribution before I looked at the product or the market. So I looked at how am I going to distribute this? And I decided to distribute it through the drug dealers at the clubs. Why? Because it was untapped. There yeah. was a big barrier to entry because most people didn't want to deal with these characters and they were difficult to get through to. But once you did, you had a captive audience of people who were selling drugs, who were taking this huge level of risk for a very small amount of profit in those days, because there was so much competition relative to the risk, I should say. Most of them were making a lot of money, but it was, you know, they'd end up in jail. And so <laughs> yeah. I utilized that as a distribution system. Then I generated publicity, most of it bad, but what happened? Well, what happened was... I would go on the news and they'd be like, isn't this stuff hurting people? Isn't this dangerous? And the people on TV wouldn't hear, isn't it dangerous? Their concern wasn't the danger of it. Their concern was, does it work? Could yeah. a natural pill do what ecstasy actually does? And if they say it's dangerous, that means it must work. <laughs> so people started buying it. And we generated over a billion dollars in sales using that concept. I spent so much time doing these talk shows and uh, going from place to place talking about the product. And no matter what they said, if they said the product was good, if they said it was bad, we would make money because they were talking about us. And it leads to a really good lesson is that people hear what they want to hear. 
Yeah. And if you want to succeed more so than becoming a salesperson that pushes things down people's throats, and I teach this again in my Amazon course, if anyone is interested in learning how to sell, how to make money online, reach out to me. It's darkzess at gmail.com, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. And I teach this all the time. And I've got a free one-hour course I'd, I'd love to share with your audience. Wow. But yeah, absolutely. Rather than pushing something down people's throats that they don't want, you decide to become a decision architect. Mm. You create an environment where people have to have what you're selling or the penalty for it is huge. And if that becomes the case, the penalty for them not having it is so big that they have to have it, they will beat down your door in order to get that thing. And now you've become a decision architect. You've created a pull to you. Yeah. And that's what we did. We created something that people found irresistible. And we used the elements of influence as taught by Robert Caldini in his famous book, Influence. I'm sure you've read it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, really good book. This, this, uh, I mean, this story almost reminds me, or the the, the way that you went about it, uh, reminds me of another book that I read a while back, or, or that I read a while back. It's uh, by Ryan Holiday. Uh, trust me, I'm lying, but they capitalize on guerrilla marketing, and um, and almost like the the bad connotation of things to to get the word out there, and and I mean, it's it's it goes to show the power of brand, right? Like drugs have a brand. There's there's a there's a there's already a context that's you know going, you know whenever you say the word drug or drug dealer, there's all, there's already something that's attached to it. There's it's a it, it's um I'm I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but it, <laughs> there, there's already something you know uh, uh, already attached to it. Okay, it's a bad thing. It's a connotation. Uh, but you you're leveraging that. You're leveraging that for the for the sake of distribution. For the sake of okay, cool. Yeah, you're right. This is untapped. If it's coming from these people, it's not supposed to be this real nice drug that you know that's that's a happy yeah you, know, you know play may, may get may get you to a happy place right. But but it's not a um, coming from a, a positive standpoint. It's it's a you know it's something that's supposed to be a drug. <laughs> what best way to do it than than pushing it and keeping it uh keeping it legal that way is that is that what your thought process was like when you were going no, through it no not at all so let me expand on your thought i think i can contribute to what i think i think you're trying to say i was taught by my teacher that everything has a spirit the very taoist principle like a rock has a spirit right it's hard it's cold it's unmovable a stone you know boulder steel has a spirit right? It's hard. It's impenetrable. Products and brands and businesses and people also have a spirit. There's a feeling to them. Mm. And if you don't shy away from what your nature is, if you don't shy away from what the nature of the product is, what you're calling brand, then you come into a place where you're your true self. And if you can own that, if you can own that authenticity, which is what we're talking about, that truth, then you control the narrative in a way that nobody else can. Because there's a lot of bullshit out there. And your product, your service isn't going to be perfect for everybody. When people lose is when they go, oh, I've got this thing. And people are like, yeah, it's not really that thing. You'll go, okay, well, then it's this other thing. And it's this other thing. And they're like, fuck you talking about it's none of those things this is bullshit Jesus, you're lying man. to me right and they bail but when you see somebody who's authentic like i love personal development and the thing that i love most is when i see somebody who's authentic it's just so refreshing you know sometimes you meet somebody and maybe they're an asshole and they're like you know they're a little rough around the edges they curse they do a few things that you might not personally do but they're real. Yeah. And it's like, oh, fucking thank God. Let's go sit down and have a drink. Let's have a coffee. Let me get to know you because I know that maybe you're not likable. Maybe you're not affable, but fuck that, man. You're real. You're, you're who you. you are. Yeah. 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 You've come into who you are and yeah. there is power in that. And similarly with products and brands, there's an intuitive realization of what the spirit of that thing is. 
what the spirit of that business is. And if you can learn how to find that, Mm. the world's your oyster. I like that, man. I like where you're coming from with this. Um, Do you use that on the, on the professional realm as well? I mean, meaning you figure out what your truth is at an individual level, which is, it sounds like that's what you've done. And then you embrace it, you own it, you you stick to your truth. And then do you use that to, uh, or does that influence what you tap into on the professional side of things? Totally. Absolutely. I think when you're authentic, when you're the real you, you attract other people that are also authentic. And this is another lesson that I teach in my Amazon Mastery, our business mastery program, where I teach people how to do that. Again, if you guys are interested, reach out, use the code Raphael CEO, and we'll give it to you for free. Email me at darkzess at gmail.com. That's D A R K Z E S S at gmail.com, or go to FBA Seller Course. Dot com FBA for fulfillment by Amazon seller course.com and book a time to talk to me. I'm happy to talk to anybody on the show. Who wants wow. To. Amazing. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so personally, one of the big lessons is that once you come into your authenticity, once you come into who you really are and who you know you can be, you start to learn your strengths and weaknesses, but more importantly, you realize that this is your journey. And you are here to do what you're here to do. You have a mission. Now, if other people want to take part of that, great. If you're hiring people, you manage them. They don't manage you. We don't go to doctors. We don't go to lawyers. We don't go to people like that and ask them to fix a problem. We hire them to execute on our mission. So if we go to a doctor, we say, hey, I've got this health issue. Here's five things that I found to deal with it. Here's what I need from you. I need you to give me a diagnosis. I need you to give me three treatment options. And then I need you to look at these alternative ways that I'm thinking about and tell me why why they're right or wrong. So similarly, a while ago, I realized that I had some pretty fucking limiting beliefs about myself. Even though I've made a billion dollars in revenue, I'm a pretty good place in my life. I've got a collection of cars. I've got homes. I've I've done, done it all traveled, private planes, all over the world, everything first class. I've done all of that. And I continue to live a pretty good life. I'm a family guy. I I travel with my family, my beautiful wife and my son, and we travel all over the world. And anywhere we're at, we're making money because people are buying our products and using our businesses and services that we do. But I thought to myself, man, I've I've got some, some blocks and I'd like to get those removed. And someone said, oh, well, you know, you should go see a psychologist and your psychologist. And I thought, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. And I remember watching the show Billions and I thought, fuck, man, I, I want to have a Wendy Rhodes. That would be <laughs> awesome, Rhodes. right? I want to hire that person. Does that exist? So funny enough, I started looking. And what I did was I actually found a psychologist who was interested in, in playing that role for me. Uh, and and I remember having a list of exactly what I wanted to do. And I very, uh, I'm a big fan of NLP and, uh, and uh, which is neuro-linguistic programming, yeah. people who don't know, as well as hypnosis. And I wanted this person, they were a clinical hypnotist or are a clinical hypnotist. And I wanted them to run certain scripts in order for me to eliminate certain negative talk that I had going on. So I created a whole program and I went to them and they were floored. They were blown away. And I spent six months running these scripts and and doing this program with this person. And it ended up being very effective for me. And the thing that was interesting was they were like, man, you know, people always come in and they're like, I've got this problem. And they talk for an hour and they expect me to fix it. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to do. And they run through the psychology books and they, you know, tell me about your mom and your dad. They're like, when you came in, you were super directed. And that's why at the end of six months, you were done and you had your resolution. In fact, I had it in 30 days, but most people don't do that. Similarly, when you hire an attorney, you're the one managing that professional, not that professional manager. Excuse me for just one second. I'm going to adjust my lighting here. I'll be right back. One second. It's, uh, it's really cool to see that you're coming from a space of empowerment when it comes to to the uh, the people that you're hiring the and that's not just talking about the team itself it's talking about uh everybody around you 
you know, professionals and attorneys and doctors and psychologists and whatever you have, you have that, uh, that sense of direction of where you're headed in terms of what you want as a result. And I think that a lot of that is missing um, when it comes to when people jump into entrepreneurship, you know, it, it's chasing that dollar it's chasing that. Uh, okay. How do we get from point A to point, uh, you know, green, uh, you know, as fast as possible, but the, uh, there's a lot of things that can be omitted from that vision. There's a lot of things that yeah. can can get us in this uh, space where we, you know, inevitably feel trapped after a period of time because we, we get caught in the, the taskiness of things. And taking a retrospective approach to it and seeing who we are as individuals, I, I think, I mean, it's some of the best invested time ever. It's true. It's true. And and it's amazing when it comes to things like books or audiobooks or programs, you know, like I've got my book there. I spent years writing, years living, writing and perfecting that. And you can buy it for like 20 bucks, right? Or you can buy a Tony Robbins book for 20 bucks, 15 bucks or 10 bucks and take away all this amazing knowledge, all this amazing information from people. But most people don't do it. Most people will spend their time just watching bullshit. They'll spend their time watching Netflix and nothing wrong with that. I like Netflix. I like watching HBO. I love doing all that stuff. But if you don't have the personal development down, if you are not constantly working on yourself, if you are not constantly consuming information for the betterment of your human organism, you will not improve. If we do not move forward, we die. And that's the thing I want people to remember. And I I make this point. It's one of my favorite, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is while you are sleeping, your enemies are planning your demise. And it's funny, but if you look throughout history, it's true. Every great leader, every great civilization, there's always somebody waiting on the wings, just waiting for you to drop the ball a little bit. So you have to be ahead of the curve. You have to be way out there ahead. You look at people like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. I mean, they're fucking sending rockets to the moon. They don't care. They're way ahead of the rest of us. No one's out serping them. And similarly, in your own business, in your own life, you always have to be doing more than you think you need to be doing in order to just stay on pace. I agree, right? Like, like the, uh, the extra mile is, is the loneliest place. That's why <laughs> people call it the extra mile. Going yeah. the extra mile, there's no competition there. There's, uh, um, I think when we get to that space of, of, um, of, of, well, to get to, when we get to that mindset, first of all, uh, the, uh, the, the ceiling, the glass ceiling that we, you know, we are, we're often like, you know, faced with can, can start to fade and, and, and really, you know, go away because what's, what's stopping you at that point, right? What is stopping your success? What is stopping you from getting to that next level? What is stopping you from picturing that next level and having the awareness that you can get things done? Uh, I think a lot of times, at least for me, uh, one, of, one of the biggest challenges was the, the think, the size of, of um, the, the possibilities. I, I just wasn't aware that I could think bigger. I wasn't aware that I could do more um, and impact more people and have you know, a bigger ripple effect uh, in, my, in my surroundings. When that kicked in, when that clicked, um, and I owned it, uh, everything changed. Like everything I was doing felt small in comparison to where I wanted to get to. But I think that's the beginning, right? There's, there's mental battles that go in there and it goes to show how often we have to come back and just um, fine tune uh, ourselves as we're going through the process. Heck, you made a billion bucks uh, and you were still having, you know, self-doubt issues. It, it, I mean, that's, again, it goes to show that this is something that's, that's a constant, right? Uh, yeah. it, it's called development. It's not, you know, the epitome of uh, personal enlightenment. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. So um, you were, you were, you're doing, you tapped into Amazon businesses and now you have, I mean, you have multiple uh, ventures going on. Okay. After, after reaching success to that, to that degree where you saw it happen, where you, I mean, really just, you know, you get really your way through, through something that's really, really, really fucking cool. Um, what, what made you say, or feel like, okay, I got to do more. Uh, I want to do more. I want you know, what's the next step? How did you open up that chapter? 
That's a good question. I don't really know what makes me want to do more. If you ask me what motivates me, my family motivates me. I'm a family. Mm. My eight-year-old son who wakes up every morning with an absolute excitement for life inspires me. Yeah. Just traveling the world with my wife and my son inspires me. Creating more wealth inspires me, not just for myself, but inspiring others to create more wealth, like creating wealth through my Amazon Mastery program or a new venture that we just launched called Podcast Cola. By the way, anyone's interested, check out podcastcola.com, where we get people to tell their story, share their story with the world on the best platform to do it, which is podcasts like this one. And we get people unlimited booking. So if you're a real estate agent, an investment banker, uh, anybody with any kind of product or service to sell, the best way we found is through storytelling. And how do people get to know you? It's through stories like you and me have been telling on this podcast by getting on great podcasts and being able to share those stories that live forever on the internet. Right. And what Podcast Cola does is we have relationships with thousands of great podcasts. There's over 7 million podcasts out there. And we get people just like yourself or me booked on those podcasts and empower them to tell their stories in a meaningful way. Here's the thing about story, right? You never know when, when that's going to have a ripple effect. You never know when you're going to plant the seed, uh, in somebody else's head, I get I get messages all the time. Hey, listen, I, I I saw you or you posted this thing I don't know months ago, and it really resonated. And now I'm doing this, this, and that. And uh, I'm not saying you know the, we're we're like we're the only catalyst, but when you put your story out there uh, through through such a powerful vehicle like like conversation, uh, it's uh, you don't know how far that's gonna make it. You don't know how far the ripple effects are gonna go and the impact that we're gonna have, uh, you know, goes. And, and uh, I mean, I agree. I mean, hell, that, that's why I, I, I just did a podcast this morning with one of my idols when it comes to, to business development. Um, and it, it wouldn't be possible if the power of conversation wasn't there. So who's your idol? Uh, Gina Wickman. Uh, he's, he's one of the people that I looked up to uh, uh, when I was first starting the business, learning about processes and systems and, and just had him on the podcast. He wrote uh, Traction, uh, oh, a couple yeah. of other books. Yeah. Yeah. So, so super cool guy, but I mean, it, it comes to show, right? Power of story. That's what we did. We went through his, his, uh, his background, how he got started. And it's, it's, um, it opens a lot of doors. It opens a lot of just for, you know, for the sake of having a, a structured type of conversation, there's an intention behind it. There's a purpose behind it. So, yeah, I mean, there's 7 million podcasts out there. I think there should be another 7 million or 7 million podcasts out there because it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, one of the best ways of one getting seeds planted when it comes to, to that mindset. And then two, um, just opening up your, your, you're breaking your paradigms, just opening up your perspective on things that, you know, we're just often just not aware, you know, things that we can, that are possible. Yeah. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about, about the difference between push marketing and pull marketing, the difference yeah. becoming a decision architect. Push yeah. marketing. I love that term, by the way. Yeah. Push marketing being, Hey, you want to buy my thing? You want to buy my, here's my thing. It's so great. It goes so fast and it's so shiny and it's the best quality and you won't be disappointed. Fuck you, man. No, no one believes you. Yeah, it's been done. <laughs> Full marketing is, man, let me tell you a story about this thing that I bought once. And it was so amazing. And it changed my life by doing this, that, and the other. And people will go, where, where do I get that? And they think it's their idea. Well, I think some of the magic when it comes to pool marketing is that it's, all, I mean, it's, it's led through, you lead with value when you're doing that kind of stuff, mm. right? You're leading with value. Um, for example, you dropping in the access to, to the training, right? That's, that is, it's going to get people to, you know, to, uh, it's going to get you eyeballs, but you're leading with value. You're planting a, a seed of, of, of growth there. Uh, and I think that's, what's so amazing about that kind of stuff. I mean, look, but I've done at this point about 200 maybe 250 podcasts, something like that, between 200 and 250. And if it's one person in their basement that I'm talking to, or a big show like Adam Carolla or Brad Lee, where I'm talking to an audience of two, three million people, I do the same thing. 
Yeah. I tell the same story. I mean, occasionally I'll tell a different story, but I'll tell the same type of stories and do the exact same thing, which is A, be authentic, right? I me and you are just having a conversation. And B, by being authentic, I realized, you know what, man? I really, truly, genuinely don't give a fuck. I don't care if somebody buys what I have to sell or not. Yeah. I'm going to tell my story. And if you feel drawn to what I'm offering, come on board. We can have a conversation. If not, fuck off. And that's the best place to be. And that's what I want to encourage and inspire people to do. People ask me oftentimes, oh, what's freedom mean to you? Easy. Freedom is being able to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, how you want. Yeah. That's why people who are millionaires and billionaires, a lot of them don't spend money on a lot of stuff, but what they will spend money on, private planes. Why? Why is there such a market for something that costs so much more, so many times more than even flying business or first class, right? You can fly to Europe for, I don't know, three grand, four grand business class, yeah. right? How much does, does it cost to fly private? A hundred grand, 80 grand, at least to Europe. Why do people pay that all day long? There's a line of people because of freedom, because they fucking can. So the more freedom you have, the more of your time you get to keep to do the shit you love to do. So how do we get you there? Through influence, through storytelling. And that's what I teach. So for anybody of your listeners, again, if you're interested, reach out to me. My direct email is darkzess at gmail.com, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. Use the code Raphael, CEO. And I'm happy to give you the one-hour course for free. If you're interested in being booked on shows like this one, check out Podcast Cola and book a time with us. We'd love to talk to you. You I should love get it, on Podcast Cola. I think you'd be great on Podcast, man. Let's do it. I'm game for that. Um, you, you, can't, you can't threaten me with a good time, bro. <laughs> no, I, I, I think one thing that I heard a while back when it comes to, to authenticity, it's, it's, and it resonated and it's been, you know, it's stuck with me. It's people got to turn you up or they got to turn you off. You know, one of the two. It, it's yeah. uh, anywhere in the, in, the, in the middle. It's really, I mean, it's not, it's not the, the, the audience, right? It's people who are not, uh, tied into you don't have that um, rage, uh, raving fan, uh, you know, a type of a uh, listener. It's it's if you're if most of your audience is there, um, there, there's something that can be done when it comes to to just. I, I'm not talking about aggressiveness or I'm talking about any of that stuff, but it's authenticity, right? It's how you shine through uh, through yeah. conversation. So yeah. Um, now let me uh, ask you a couple of questions before we you can kind of start signing off. Um, sure. But it's. Um, so you've hit it big on a, on a few things, right? What about what about uh, the uh, the the story of rags to riches? Yeah. Uh, and right now, in a world that's so saturated, there's so many you know things coming up on a regular basis. Um, do you do you feel like there's uh, there's still hope for that kind of stuff to happen, or or and if so, how? Yeah, I think more so now than ever are there opportunities. There's opportunities on Amazon. People can start an Amazon company and create predictable recurring revenue streams every day. And I see it happen every single day, people making money on the Amazon platform. And really like things like Amazon today is still day one. There's so much opportunity, so many things that you can do, but it requires a shift of mindset. A good teacher of mine once told me, if you keep doing what you're doing, You'll keep getting what you got. So you yeah. got to have a shift. And that shift's got to be up here and in here, in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a two, it's a two-step process. You can have all the systems in place, the, the best business model, the best opportunity out there. But if your mind is not wired, right. Uh, or, or what you're doing doesn't align with, with the person who you are, it's, it's not going to pan out. Uh, it's, sure. uh, there's no, there's no sustainability in that type of stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, absolutely true. I love it. Yeah, I love it, man. Um, so you gave us a couple of links. If somebody wants to reach out to you and maybe uh, you tap into or, I don't know, send you a message, social media and that kind of stuff, where's the best place to, uh, to find you? Yeah, you. so if anyone's interested in being booked on shows like this, check out podcastcola.com. If you're interested in the Amazon course, go to fbasellercourse.com. You can also check me out on shaheenshan.com, the book, Billion 
How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult is out now on Amazon, Audible. Read it while you're working out. Check out the Audible. I'm a big fan of audiobooks. Oh, yeah. Listen to them in 2X, 3X. It's my favorite. And reach out to me by email, guys. I'm giving you my direct email. I answer every email right away. Uh, personally, uh, I'm very accessible. I love talking to people and learning about what your goals are. So if you're interested in any of the above, reach out to me, darkzess at gmail.com. That's D A R K. Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. Dark says at gmail.com. Uh, perfect, man. Um, I have, um, thank you for that, by the way. I mean, I think people, you guys got to take advantage of that, uh, of the, uh, the program that's out there. Anything that plants a seed on prosperity, I mean, why not, right? Why, why not at least explore it, especially when it's, uh, you're being generous to, to put it out there for free for, for my audience, man. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, uh, before, before we, we close it off, I have this, this one question that I think is sure. my favorite question of all time, but if you were walking down the street and mm. you ran into your 17 year old self, yeah. what, what, what advice would you tell that kid? I'd say, don't be scared of spending money on personal development. Mm. If you've got 10 hours to cut down a tree, spend nine and a half of that time sharpening your ax yeah. and seek mentorship. Find people who've been where you want to go and get them to teach you how they got there. Mm. Cut the learning curve. I love it. I love it. I did that so late in the game, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so late. I, I feel like I, I, feel like I, I lost a good decade uh, I know. in terms of uh, leaps and bounds. Uh, but there's always time. And, and right. most men don't reach their full potential until after they're 50. So you seem like a young guy. I think you still have years ahead of you. And probably the big thing that you're going to do hasn't even come onto your radar yet. I think so. I think so. I think there's plenty of runway to, you know, plenty of runway left. So, so uh, yeah, but it's important to, to have that awareness, right? Now you see killers. I mean, you see kids in their 20s who are just absolutely crushing it uh, because they have that, uh, that ability to be open to outside advice, right? One of the best uh, pieces of advice was uh, that I've ever received uh, and landed uh, was who, not how. Who knows more about this than I, than I do? Who can help me get to this faster? Now, how can I figure this shit out? Um, that takes a lot of time. And, and a lot of times it doesn't even line up with the stuff that I wanted. So I, I agree with you. I think we work for our options. Any effort that we're taking uh, in terms of an entrepreneur or risks or, or you know, whatever, it, it's... It's um, the basis of it is it the aspiration of options. I want to own my options. I want to have the most options as possible. Uh, and that's, that's how we go about them. Um, so, so getting there fast is definitely one of the, one of the key factors. Uh, yeah. No yeah. better way to get rich than quick. <laughs> than <you know>? quick. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show uh, with us. And of course, um, uh, very, very grateful for you sharing that uh that uh the program with us uh follow the um i'm gonna put all the links yeah also the um the links to the book and and i'll definitely be uh be going through that leaving a review and we'll make sure to have all the links that you just mentioned in the uh, the show notes so people can can uh, take absolute advantage of those it's insane people just go ahead and do it it's it's, it's a no-brainer <laughs> do it doing it sounds good brother thank you so much man i, I appreciate you stopping by thank you Raphael. okay that was fun if you liked what you saw make sure to subscribe and like below make sure to leave us a comment and join the community